Hello, it's Sally here from Dotty B. Welcome to my channel. Um, today I'm going to be working on um, another little um, slow stitch tutorial. Um, in the first one that I did, we just concentrated on um, running stitch and doing the stitches um, on this, this little piece here. So we're going to build on that now and start to add a little bit of interest um, with a little bit of fabric and a little bit of lace and trimmings um, and still keeping into in with the basic um, running stitch and also um, starting to branch out a little bit and we're going to do a little cross, some little crosses I think um, and go on from there, we'll see how it goes. So first of all, I'm starting with um, a square of um, cotton fabric. This is just um, an old piece that I've got. It's, um, it's quite soft um, and did I, say, did I say 10 by 10? About, about roughly, it's just a little bit over, I think. So, um, well, that's just over four by four. Um, so I'm going to start with that. And I've just, I'm going to um, limit my palette um, I find it, um, I, I like limiting my palette sometimes just because I can go a little bit overboard on colour. So I'm going to concentrate on blue today. Um, I have got a little bit of red because I'm going to put some interest in as in red and I've got some like creams and um, cream and a white thread. Um, but all of my fabrics are kind of like blue and white and beigey creamy type colours. So I'm going to stick to this palette overall but i will be adding um a little bit of of red i think so first of all i'm going to and i've got some i've got some little trims and i just picked out a, a, a few bits and bobs and some lace um which i'm going to hopefully add on as well so but i'm just going to pop those over one side for now because we'll have a look at those in a moment um first of all we're going to lay down our base fabric so you just need tiny little bits nothing um nothing to um you know just whatever you, whatever you can find around the house or what you've got um if you've got um some old clothing that you can cut up you could use that um old men's shirts are quite handy for their checks and stripes um just that, that kind of, whatever you've got at hand so i've just pulled out um some beige and blues which i'm going to use a couple of plain um, a stripe and a couple of florals as well and I'm just going to start building up my uh, my fabric so I'm just going to place the fabrics um, down um, and see where it takes me so I've got some this one here I'm just going to cut a little bit off because I don't need all of that so I might have that there, that's somewhere there. I've got this one here, which is kind of like a linen-y type fabric. I don't know where, it, it feels a little bit upholstery, but um, I don't know where that's come, that came from. And I don't think it's going to tear, so I'm going to cut that. I like that. I kind of want it a little bit higgledy piggledy. I don't want it um, I think that can go probably go in there, but um I don't like that like that. That went there. There we go. 
you just have to fiddle around with it until you find, find something that you like. So um, I quite like it like that. Oh, let's just have a change around just go up there and there. Yeah, I kind of like it like that. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just with my pins, I'm just going to pin some of it down. Just and then I'm going to cut some of it away. I may have gone over the edges a little bit, but I don't. I don't mind. This is going to go into my um, my stitch journal when I finished. So as long as it's not too big, it'll be fine. Right, that's quite close to that edge. I'm just going to shuffle that up a little bit. I'm not bothered about the ragged edges too much. I wonder if I need to pull that in a little bit as well. I want to pull that one in a little bit. And that one over should just about fit. Yep. Let's try that again. And that one's just moving out. I'm getting a bit wonky. Ouch. Then just this one here. Let me just do this bit here as well. I'm just, I think I've got everything tied down now. It just doesn't feel straight. Let me take that out. There's something not straight about this. There, right, I'm just going to turn it over. And I can see where my edges are going over the top. So I'm just going to snip those off. Which are sticking out a little bit. Okay, nothing goes to waste. I can save those for another project. Um, you can see some of this has gone over, but it doesn't really matter. I'm not that bothered about that. So that's kind of like, yep. So I'm happy with that. So that's what we're going to start with. Um, I'm just going to pop those away for now. So first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach my fabrics to my base cloth. So I'm going to use, this is just a cream um, perle cotton, one of the thin ones. And I have got needles somewhere. So I'm going to use, this is a chenille needle, chenille number 22. Um, I'm going to start off with this one and see how I get on with this. I may need to go for a thinner one, I'm not sure. Okay, so um, when we were doing the, um, the first project, we were just doing some running stitch. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm just going to do some running stitch to attach my pieces to my base cloth. So I'm going to start here. I'm going to almost hem a straight across, but obviously I'm going to leave my raw edge. I'm not tucking that in at all. And I'm just going to do a running stitch all the way across. And that's attaching, not only is it attaching the striped one, it's attaching the one, yeah, I think I might have a bit, my needle might be too thick. It's attaching this one as well because they're overlapping. So you can either do your running stitch on top like this, or you can stab and go down and then back up again. It's entirely up to you. It doesn't matter which way you do it. I usually find 
I find it easier to do it like this, but because I've got, I'm sewing through three layers of fabric, it can get a little bit tough. And I think my needle might be a little bit too thick. Let me just try a different needle. I have struggled. I struggle to <laughs> thread it if it's um, if it's too thin, but we'll have a go and see if I can get it through. This is a um, a milliner's needle, which is just it's a, just a straight needle with a smaller eye, but it's thinner. usually easier to get through yeah that's so much easier you see how I was struggling before and now it's going straight through okay so I've got to the end of that and then I'm going to jump across to this one here and then sew around this one so I'm going to you could finish off and start all over again but I'm not I'm just going to go around here and then over to here and just do a running stitch to attach this on. I'm just going to stop there a second. Now that things are starting to get attached, I'm going to take out the pins that I don't need any longer. So that one there I don't need, that one there I don't need, and I don't really think I need that one either, okay? Because I've come to the end, I'm gonna to have to knot it off and then start over on the other side. So I'm just going to finish that off there. Just do a loop, or well, you'll get a loop anyway. You just go through the loop and you can do that just a couple of times. To make your knot. And if you just use your fingernail just to kind of push it down a little bit. It shouldn't be going, shouldn't be coming undone anytime soon. Okay, so. This is where I kind of joined this, this piece of fabric. So I'm going to go down here this time. And again, just a running stitch. I'm going to ignore this piece of fabric for now and just carry straight down. I might catch a few threads, but it doesn't matter. Okay, and then I'm going to go up here, and then this piece is all sewn on. You can see this is not cut straight, but I, I don't mind that. I think it adds, I think it adds to the piece when things aren't quite straight. Okay, I'm just going to take this pin out because we don't need that one any longer. Okay, so that's that one done. I'm not going to do the edges at the moment. One knot. There we go. That's knotted off. Okay, so where else do we need to do? We need to do this piece here. I think this is the last piece we need to do because this one and this one are being tied down by all the other stitches. So we don't really need to do them. So I'm going to do, I'm going to go, I'm going to start here and I'm going to go round, down and back up. Oops. I'm stuck. There we go. I'm just going to take this one out. Don't need that anymore.
and here again I've got a ragged edge but um, and it's fraying quite a lot but um, I don't mind that some of it might come off as I'm working the piece but um, if it doesn't then it can stay ouch Some of these um, fabrics, um, this one here and this one, have both been tea dyed. Um, that's where you just take your fabric, uh, where you make, <laughs> almost like, you get some tea bags, put some boiling water with them, and then you just um, dunk your fabric in. Leave it for as long as you like. I, I think I left these, I thought, I, um, thought they'd gone too far actually, because I, I, I left them and forgot about them. I forgot to go back, so they were in there for about an hour before I pulled them out but um, I quite like them now actually so um, I was quite pleased because th these had white backgrounds um, th this one especially was really white and it just wasn't um, it wasn't going with anything that I had it kind of stuck out with all of the creamy fabrics that I'd got so um, I didn't do all of it I, I did about half of it so I have still got some of the white but um, I prefer it tea dyed I was pleased with how it came out. Let's just take that one out. And I think that's it for that one. I've just noticed I've got a little bit of a, a loose bit here, so I'm going to go and do that. But all of my seams now or apart from that one, I tied down, I think. And shouldn't be going anywhere. So I've just got enough thread to do this little bit here. These seams don't have to be have to be that neat because we're probably going over some of them with lace and stuff. But um, like I said in the other video before, um, you don't have to be your stitches do not have to be even length. They can be whatever length you decide them to, you decide them you choose them to be. You decide to be. That's not working. <laughs> Whichever way you decide, they can be long, short, small, whatever. It doesn't matter on, on this. You just do whatever you feel like doing. So you can do whatever you like. Um, so that is the base um, fabrics tied down. And we're going to start um, thinking about how the piece is going to look in the end, what we're going to add on. So I've got all of these bits and pieces that I've just dug out of my um, drawer that I've used on other projects or I haven't used on other projects because I've used other things and this is just what's been left behind. I've not had a chance to tidy it away yet. I forgot all about them, to be honest. So um, I pulled those out. I've got a little bit of trim. Um, I have also got, yeah, I dug out some buttons and some beads as well. There we go. Button. I'm keeping quite neutral with the buttons and the beads and I found that as well, a little loop. I don't know whether it's like a little curtain ring or what, I don't know, but I thought that'd be quite interesting to put on. So I might put that on. And some little, I've got some lovely little glass buttons here. That's quite a nice one. Can you see that flower one? Um, and then just some other plasticky ones. Some are vintage, that one's a vintagey one. And I think that one is as well. Um, and just, just some old ones. That's kind of like a pearl, mother of pearly type thing. It feels cold. I don't know whether it's... It could be plastic, actually. I think it's plastic. And just some... A few beads that were hanging around. Oh, and a sequin. One's tray sequin. So I might put that on as well. So all kind of in the same neutral palette. Um, and this is what I'm going for anyway, just to um, keep it nice and simple. So that's that, and uh, yes, yeah, so trims. So I dug out a leaf, which I quite like. I've got some lovely old lace here. This one's nice, quite like that. 
a um, little bit of bobbly trim I like a uh, little flower there a blue flower although it's got green on so I don't know whether the green will be too much it's quite a bright green and it's a turquoise blue so I'm not sure about that um so you've got another like a coffee colored trim uh, I've got this here and this which I quite like as well this trim it's quite old this is it's got um it's mocked like little I don't know what it is almost look like rust marks but I don't know what that is um so laces laces I've got a little kind of lacy there's a few uh, lacy trim that must come off lacy trim a little flower which I quite like um there's that there which is just come off a little bit of piece of um, embroidery on glay um, which I quite like. Um, I've got a couple of these here are edges off napkins um, and then I used a stamp, um, a, a number stamp um, to do those. I think I was I was going to put that on my Christmas project and I didn't do it in the end for 25 Christmas. But I've got the two which I quite like. I'd quite like to put that on. Um, I have got that which I was thinking I might put on but I'm not going to put that on now um yeah so let's start with getting some oh, I've got that as well but I think that's a bit too green yeah too green too green I'm going to dismiss those straight away I quite like one of these though I'm going to have one of those oh I've also got some have I got any Suffolk puffs that would I'm just going to have my Suffolk puffs These are already made up. Um, I think in another video I'll go through how to make them if you're not if you're not familiar with how to make them. Like that, that looks good, doesn't it? That one's a bit too turquoise. What else have I got? That one's got green in it. Um, this is a vintage one. This is more. This is a modern one that I've made. Um, a little bow there but that's too big sorry i don't think i'm on, on camera sorry that's quite a nice one kind of a silky a silky one oh that's a pretty one um nope not the right color that one there that's a plain one i quite like this one i'm going to go for this one here so we'll have a suffolk puff have a flower. Probably going to position them in the where there's a corner, I think, for these, possibly. I wish that was cream rather than white. Standing out a little bit too much. Not sure about that. Um, okay, where's the number? I quite like that number on. And I'd quite like a little bit of lace. So what lace have we got? This is a nice one. I know it's white, but I've also, I've also got this one here. It's got little squares on it. It's quite nice. I think that's the other way around. Hmm. All right, and I like the bobbly trim. I'm going to put some of that on and I like that as well I'm going to have some of that so let's snip a piece of lace anyway I'd quite like a little bit of lace on the edge there I'm going to have that on um right I like that and I like that but the kind of, kind of does it need a three I could put a button couldn't I and then that's kind of like a that's a nice button, isn't it? That looks good. Or that one. Oh, do we go all the same kind of tone or do we go off? I think we go off. I like that. Okay, so that's that. Got my buttons, got my suffer puff, got my bit of lacy trim, flower, bit of lace. That do we want a leaf? No, I think it's going to be too much. Let's no leaf. Um, do I want any more lacy trim? Not 
not sure. Got that base as well, that's delicate. Hmm. Nope, that can stay there. This is kind of like the same fabric as that. It's a bit shiny. I'm going to say no to that. But I like that. There. So let's pin on what... Let's make some decisions. I'm going to have that there. Let's just take those off a second. to have that like that so I'm going to layer that up just like so and let's stick a pin in that for a definite I'm just going to pin down my Suffolk puff and also that and once it's all pinned down, we can just have a quick look to see if we're happy. What does that look like? I've got this trim as well. I don't know whether this is... Um, I don't want to cover that rose up. I like that rose too much. Hmm. Let's snip a little bit of this off. I don't know whether it's supposed to be. I think it's supposed to be like that. It's got this. Like, this just feels rubberized. This does. But um, I'm going to pop it there. I think. See what that looks like. There we go. Okay. I think that's. I like that. Oh, hang on, I forgot my bubble trim. Do we have a little bubble trim? I think so. Down there, maybe. Yep. So that's going to go there. Okay, so that's kind of like what I am aiming for. So let's tie, get some of this tied down. I'm just going to get some more thread because there's not enough there. So if I get all this tied down and then I'm going to start doing some decorative stitches in a different colour. So I want to, I've not done that very well. I want to, um, some of the pieces, I want to see my stitches in a different colour. So I'm not going to do all in this. In fact, I'm thinking, shall I do any in this? Do you know what? I'm just going <laughs> to, I'm changing my mind. I'm going to change my mind and I'm going to start with red. Let's start with some colour. Now I picked this out. Because I like I liked the darkness of it. I didn't realise that it. I don't know what it is. Um, I thought it was a perle, but I'm not sure. Not sure what it is because it's stranded. How many strands are in it? Three. 
three strands. So it kind of looks a little bit thicker than the DMC stuff. But I'm just going to use one because it's it's a bright colour and it's going to stand out anyway. Um, I'm just going to use one strand. See if I can get it threaded under my needle. Okay. So again, I'm not going to hide my stitches. In fact, I love this the effect that this does anyway. So, oops, a daisy. So I'm going to start with my Suffolk Puff because once I've got that sewn down and this one sewn down, the lace bit, then it kind of traps the lace and then I'll be able to do the lace as well. But I'm going to start with the Suffolk Puff. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to just tiny stitches. I'm going to go over and just go all the way around in red, which I think looks lovely. I also like, um, I've got another favourite thread which if you've watched my other videos you'll, you'll know because you you're probably fed up of me harping on about it this color here i like doing the stuff that puffs in this color as well but today i'm being really strict with myself and i am only using the red white and blue tones so obviously cream and beige is kind of like a, a tone of the white but they're the, they're the colours that I'm using. So I'm going to just go round my Suffolk Puff and tying that down, sewing it down. I hope you're all well today. I don't think I've asked you, have I? I hope you're all well and enjoying your weekend. It's um, a Saturday here today. And the sun is out. It's a beautiful day. It's cold, but it's a lovely day. Um, went out for a walk this morning. Um, and walk, it's a few, few miles walk, but it was lovely. Not done it for ages. So it was nice to get out. Get a bit of fresh air. Um saw lots of wildlife on the way. There was um oh dozens of robins, little robin red breasts, and they're, they're so they're not they're not really afraid of you that much. Um they were really we were probably about no probably three feet away from them. They just sat there chirping away. Um saw a squirrel. And other, a few other birds. It was nice to get out. I'm just looking out of the window at the moment and I can see the robin. We've got a little robin in our garden. And I can't see any other birds at the moment, but um, there are usually quite a lot of house sparrows we have. There, so that's the Suffolk Puff tied on. So I'll finish that off. Often, I think there's a, a strand of something kind of got in the way. Okay, so that's that done. And to the flower. I'm going to do the same as I've just done for the Suffolk Puff and just go around the edges and stitch it on. This is just a simple, basic, um, kind of like a whip stitch. It's just a single stitch on its own. Just up and over. And it just attaches everything to your fabric.
if you are um, taking part in these um, tutorials and you are stitching along, then um, it'll be lovely to see what you're doing over on the Facebook page. I've got a Facebook page. It's um, there's a link um, down below and um, it's called Dotty Bee's Slow Stitching. If you um, There's just a couple of questions to answer, but if you go over there and join, then you can show what you're working on. Even if you're not doing these and you're doing another project, um, and you want to head over and join and show us what you're doing, that would be great. It's lovely to see what everyone else is sewing at the moment. It's nice to get ideas and inspiration. I'll take the pin out of that one. It's a lovely, friendly group, very supportive. Oh, as you can see, this is old thread and I've pulled it a little bit too hard and it's gone and snapped. That's the problem with the old thread. Um, it isn't quite as strong as your modern, your modern ones, but um, I've got, I got quite a lot out of that, so that, that's fine. Um, so I'm going to finish with that one and I'm going to start again with a fresh one. I'm going to sew the button on now, again in the red. I'm going to do, because it's got the four, four holes, I'm going to do a cross. And I'm going to do a cross because I'm also going to do some crosses on the fabrics as well. So um, position the button and come up. This can take a little bit of um, prodding around sometimes. So I'm going into the top and then down through the bottom one. And then I'm going to try and get into the top hole. Yeah, it's just kind of feeling, I've lost my needle, feeling around for it. There you go. And back down again. And repeat that a couple of times so it's nice and secure. time okay so that's on and it looks lovely and again you just finish off try not to pull <laughs> too hard on the old thread this time there we go Okay, so the only thing I've got to do on this part here is just um, secure the rest of the lace because when I take the pin out, this bit will be flapping around. So I'm just going to go from the edge and it's um, just do a whip stitch. So you come up one side and go down. That's all I'm going to do. And your stitches can be however you want them to be. No rules at all. I think a um, couple more and we're done. One more. Okay, so that's that side. Now what I could do, I can finish it off there or I can go across. So that's what I'm going to do. All I'm going to do is just do almost like a running stitch all the way across. I 
I'm not, not really making my stitches that even. Because I'm from the Higgledy Piggledy school of sewing. <laughs> I like them like that. So. Oops, got that caught. I just think they look good, like, you know, all higgledy piggledy. I don't, I just don't think they'd look as good if they were straight, to be honest. So, um, but that's me. So I'm over to the other side and I'm just going to do the same again. Just go down with a whip stitch. Just come in and go down. Ouch. to be sewn on before it's time. There we go, I think one more. Oh my god, I'm just going to see, I don't know what that is there, I think that might be just some stray threads. I'm sure what that is, where's my needle from? Right, I've got one more stitch in there. Okay, so that's that done and I'm just going to finish that off. Oh, doesn't that look lovely? I like that. Right, so let's change colour. Now I've got two different blue. I've got actually I've got three. I've got three different blues. Um, so it doesn't really matter which one you use. I'm going to use the lighter one to start with, just because it's thinner and it might just look a bit nicer. I don't know. We'll see how we get on. Plus, it's easier to thread. And the other two, I'll have to change needles if I go onto the, especially that one, that one's a bit thicker. But again, I don't know what it is because it's not got a label on. Those ones I think are, I don't know. I bought them second hand, so I don't know. I'm not sure, I'm not sure. Okie dokie. So I'm going to stitch on this little bit of trim. This time, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to do some crosses. So I'm going to start here. I'm going to start, no, not. It's better to start. I'm going to start here. Okay, so I'm going to come in at the top and I want to do some crosses. So I'm going to, if you imagine a square, I'm going to go over like we did the but with the button. We sewed a cross on that. I'm going to go over these are, again don't have to be perfect they I can guarantee they're not going to be perfect but I'm going to do a cross okay you can see it's not perfect but it doesn't matter move over a little bit and do another one go over there Through my knot. Not sure how that's happened. Okay, second cross. Let's do another one. Over. Okay, if you visualize a box kind of what i do is visualize a square box if you can and then obviously you're coming here to here and then you're going back up here to here and making you cross so 
So from one corner of the box to the other side of the box, back up onto the side of the box and down onto this side. And that's it. always draw them if you've got a fine maybe a fine pencil I'm not sure how it would go but I've got one of these type of pencils but what you could do is you could just probably put dots actually okay can you see those dots I've just put four dots so we're going up at one down at another up at that one that's not right actually go over a bit up there over to that one there if you do it light enough you won't be able to see it or you could always use um, if you've got a um, if you've got one of those the friction pens you could do it with that don't actually have to, have to draw an X or a box you can just kind of draw the points of it if you just need a little bit of guidance one more let's see how we get on I'm not sure whether I'm going to get another one there because this fabric because this fabric here is frayed there so I'm going to leave it like that I would like another one though mm, right I'm going to have a go fabric is a little bit frayed on one side but maybe the trim itself will kind of hold it all in place there. yeah got that one in okay so I'm just going to finish that off ouch how many times a day do you stab yourself with a needle or a pin seems like Ever doing it. Okay. I'm going to go across the bottom as well. I think I've got enough thread just to do that. over to that side one just here I should be able to get one on the other side Closer to the edge you get, the harder it is to sew sometimes, but you can usually just pick up a few strands there. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so let's finish that off. See what to do next. Okay, I've got this little piece of lace here and I've got that bobbly trim as well, haven't I? So I'll do that after. I'm going to do this now. So I'm going to, this is also a thin um, perle, so I'm going to use this one. This one's a little bit brighter and a bit darker. Thank 
key. So again, I'm going to start at one end and just do a whip stitch. So okay, all stitches are showing uh, all physician all visible. Sure that's straight. and then round the corner and back down. Okay, let's finish that off. It's amazing how um, how fast things come together once you start adding different bits and pieces. It's, it's looking lovely. I'm really pleased with that. Right, I'm gonna go back to red, I think, to finish off this little bit. So I'm going to sew on my little number down here. So I'm gonna start in this corner here Just a whipping stitches again. Could, um, if you were doing it and you did have some um, letters or um, some stamps, ink stamps, you could do a, a letter, that, uh, sorry, you could do a letter or a number that, you know, you could do your initial, you could do your birth date or if you were making this, I like these little squares um, because they're so handy to keep and stick onto a, a blank birthday card you can, that you can buy in like the craft shops and then you've got um, a birthday card for somebody that's unique you could personalize it to to them you could put their birth date on or their initial on i think they're a per just a perfect size for doing that kind of thing and plus you're practicing your stitching as well and being creative oops One more. Oops. There we go. Okay, let's finish that off. And then I think I've got my bobble trim to put on, haven't I? Oh, and then I said I might... Oh, I don't know what I've done there. I might put some sequins on. Not sequins. Beads. Oh, my days. What have I done? Look at that. <laughs> right. It'll just be, just be pulled through like that, and then I'll tell you what, it's just, I don't know what has happened there at all. I'm just going to bit of a disaster. Let's just tie that down a little bit so it doesn't um, hang down. I won't be able to see it then.
okay so that's the number done and we've got bobbles to do the bobbly bit bobbly trim so get my bobbly trim and again i'm going to start around here and i'm just going to go over that one go over One. Just do that all the way down. Okay. Right, that one's not caught through there and that's okay tie that off I think we're about there so let's put on a few um I'm just gonna pop those pins away so I can do some beads right with the beads I think I am going to use white so I've already pulled oops Already put a piece of white thread. Okie dokie. So, where am I going to put some beads? Well, I think I'm going to carry on just here. So, I want to put a bead there. So, oh, I was going to put that on as well and tie that ring rid of the buttons okay let's see what turn beads we've got right i think i've lost my needle no it's there righty ho so i've got this pearl bead here i don't know whether my needle's going to go through it but i love it yes it's going to go through it's quite large but i think it's from it's not a pearl but it's from a pearly like necklace that fell apart Sure if you scratch it it'll, the paint will come off and it'll just be a plastic bead underneath but um we'll be careful with it and not scratch it and the pearliness will stay but if you've got some pearl beads they that will be nice as well to pop on okay so we've got that one on i'm just going to pop another one somewhere here what have i got i've got that one which is like a bluish it's kind of it kind of matches that. It's a bluey greeny colour, I suppose. So if I was being strict with myself, I probably shouldn't put it on, but I quite like the size difference. So if I put this one on, and then all of my other beads are a little bit smaller. I'm just going to pull that a little bit tighter. I think that will kind of be a nice contrast. So, so it's just a white bead. There. Have I got, I quite fancy another small one. I've got a sequin there. I'm going to put a sequin on. I'm not going to put any more of those beads on. I'm just going to see if I have got a smaller bead. I'm not sure whether I have. I think they might be the same. Ooh, no, they're not. They're smaller. So let's have... I'm going to put another bead here. Um, let's go for white. Right. Blue that I've got isn't quite is is more turquoisey, so I'm not going to go. For, I wonder if I, hang on, I've got another pack of beads. Let me just um, grab the other pack of beads. Let's just oh okay, I have got a nice blue in there actually. I like that blue. I'm going to have one of those. And I've got a navy. I'm going to have a navy. <laughs> oh, hang on, I've got that one. Oh, oh okay. Um, no, I'm going to have a navy. 
and a lighter blue. Let's just take one of each of those. So what was I going? That's a smaller, smaller white. Let's go for the navy. No, let's go for the navy first of all. Hopefully it fits through my needle. I like that they're all completely different. Like the fabrics that I'm using, they're all completely different. They're all mishmash, but they all work. Right here, I want the sequin. Where is my sequin? Oh, it's only just going through. bubbles that's the sequin and then we're going to have another what have we got another blue one Yeah. We don't want overkill, do we? <laughs> or is there overkill already? <laughs> Probably. But hey ho! It's all good. Right. Okay. Do we want one more? No, we don't want a white because we've already got a white there. I'm just going to pop those in in there. Out of the way. I'm just going to shut those up so they don't fall out. And I think I'm quite happy with that. So has that gone through to the back? Right, let's just finish that off. There. Yep, I quite like that little cluster. Um, right, so that is basically it for... Oh, I've still got a neat little pin in there for that kind of design but you can take it so much further you can still it, can, it doesn't have to be finished um if i were to get some more red thread i can do loads and loads of running stitch over it so if i took the red for example you can do this all in white, whitey cream, you can do it all in blue, or you can do it a bit of each. But just here, in this little space, I just fancy doing a little bit of running stitch. So this is what we were doing in, where's that other piece? So this one here, we're just taking this a little bit further than, well, not really even a little bit further. We're doing the same, exactly the same, but we're just making it decorative in amongst what we've you know what we've done so although they're really simple stitches they look really good I think they do anyway I hope you do too so just gonna go up and down running stitch just in this little piece Again, like I did last time, I don't want my stitches to be uniform. I don't want them to fall into place next to each other. So I'll kind of vary the length of them. I love the way this is turning out. Oops. 
you don't even have to do the whole of the you could you could stop after this one i tell you what you can also do you can carry on so i'm not going to carry on over the lace i don't think but if i go back up to the top so and then carry on up here a little bit Just, you don't have to stop. There's no rules. You do whatever pleases you. So go to there. Oops. Okay, go back down. But you don't have to stay in the. You don't have to do it level. You can go further in. to do one more row just needs another row I think and I'll stop there okay let's finish that off So that's what we've done. Which way does it go? It goes that way up, doesn't it? There. Okay. So that's what we've done with just limiting our palette to red, white, and blue, essentially. Obviously, it's there's creams in there and whatnot and beiges, but on the whole, it's a red, white, and blue type of thing. So it you don't have to have loads and loads of colours to do something really really nice i mean i love that i think it's really nice that's going to go into my journal um yeah so i could follow i could do some more stitching i could do some more decorative stitching the decorative stitching that we've learned is the cross the cross stitch today we've got some whipping stitch here which looks great um yeah so i hope you've enjoyed that anyway and i hope that's kind of it's you know you've gone on from just a straight stitch using straight stitch again but kind of varying it into the whipping stitch and the cross stitch and just you know using colors as a way to um decorate your piece so um yeah i hope you've enjoyed that anyway thank you so much for watching and um i look forward to seeing you again soon okay take care bye bye